rugged coastlines, industrial cities, rural landscapes and historic castles. Ulster has a wealth of places to see and explore. For centuries, the comings and goings of folk between Ulster and Scotland have left their mark on our landscape and people. I'm Lolly Spence, and in this short series, I'll be visiting some of the most stunning visitor attractions Northern Ireland has to offer, many of them steeped in Ulster Scots history. Today we're travelling about 120 kilometres west of Belfast. Not far from the market town of Oma, we're visiting a centre which tells the story of emigration from Ulster to America. During the 18th century, emigration was at its height, with people leaving from across Ireland, including those with Ulster Scots heritage. I'm here in County Tyrone, surrounded by the Sparren Mountains and the beautiful Gorchen Lakes. I'm at the Ulster American Folk Park, where we're going to be looking at a very important chapter in Ulster Scots history. The Ulster American Folk Park showcases buildings and artefacts from the 18th and 19th centuries, taking visitors on a journey back in time, from the old world of Ulster to the new world on the American frontier. The Ulster American Folk Park offers us an opportunity to experience what life was like for over a quarter of a million people who left Ulster in the early 18th century. Here you can dander along pathways and peek inside original thatched stone cottages dating back to the 1700s. Many of the emigrants were descended from the original Scottish Presbyterians who had come here in the early 1600s at the time of the plantation of Ulster. And they stayed here and built single storey stone cottages, a little bit like this one, with the traditional thatched Irish roof. So now we're inside one of the traditional Irish thatched rural cottages that you find at the museum with all of those features such as the exposed underside of the roof, the old ingle nook fireplace with the crook crane, all of the delftware of the family displayed on the dresser and the settle bed which during the day was a seat but by night which you could fold out. This was a very traditional home that the Ulster Scots would have settled in and it was a home just like this which a five-year-old left in 1818. Thomas Andrew Mellon went on to found a very significant dynasty in America that I'll tell you about shortly. In this section of the folk park, you can stroll down cobbled streets lined with authentic shops and buildings which were typical of Ulster towns in the 19th century. At the end of the main street stands a replica of a ship which would have brought Ulster Scots families to the New World. Now I'm on the dock side. This could be Belfast, Londonderry, Newry, Larne, Portrush. Many families emigrated from these ports heading to the east coast of America to begin their new life. They would have bought a ticket like this one which cost five pounds. Took the average man three months to earn this and they were going to be on this ship for between six to eight weeks. The journey across the Atlantic on these wooden sailing ships was frequently hazardous. The passengers faced low ceilings, overcrowded berths, very poor sanitation, lack of food, lack of fresh drinking water, and terrible storms at sea. Very often, they never made it to America. But for those who did, a new world was waiting for them on the other side of the Atlantic. And now here I am, arrived off the ship into Baltimore, America. Can you imagine for those first Ulster emigrants, the men, women and children, just what an exciting new beginning this must have been. 
the folk park lets us imagine the 19th century shops and buildings which would have greeted the new arrivals in America. Now, one of the first things that the settlers would have had to do when they arrived in America was get in some provisions. They needed to build their homes. They needed to get something to eat. So they'd have come to a store, something like this general merchant store, and they'd probably been a little bit overwhelmed by some of the weird and wonderful things they saw. New seeds, new farming implements, new foodstuffs, corn in the cob. This was new. Look at the size of this big pumpkin. Again, another new vegetable. Imagine how pleased they would have been to see the familiar words, post office. Here was the place where they could send a letter back home to let the families in Ulster know that they had survived and they'd made it to the new world. So do you remember I told you a story in the cottage about a wee boy who left here when he was five years old in 1818? Well, it's his name you see above this bank. Thomas Mellon went on to become one of the most successful philanthropic industrialists of America and his family name is well known there to this day. Thomas Mellon made a success of any enterprise he undertook. In 1859, he was elected judge of the Court of Common Pleas. He invested in coal and real estate and the Mellon family became one of the richest in America. This beautiful log farmhouse behind me is a replica of the Mellon family home in Pennsylvania. Now I've told you already that the Mellons made it big in America, but so too did many other families of Ulster Scots origin. In fact, a quarter of the American presidents are of Ulster Scots extraction. If you're interested in finding out more about your Ulster Scots connections, it's well worth coming here, visiting the Mellon Centre for Migration Studies, also at the Ulster American Folk Park. This building is a specialist immigration resource centre and for over 40 years they've been amassing this marvellous archive of resources relating to Irish migration all over the world. There are a great range of resources online here at the Centre for Migration Studies and I've come across this very amusing letter from William Young. He emigrated to New York in the 1800s and he wrote to his friend Robert Taylor of Coleraine. So in this letter of March the 18th, 1850, he seems a lot more interested in what's going on with the young ladies at home than he does in his new life in America. So let me read you a wee bit of it. He says, Dear Robert, I have not got acquainted with any of the young Yankee girls that could compare with Coleraine, Derry or Balamoney. You mustn't forget to remember me to all the young ladies of my acquaintance at home. Then he describes where he is now. He says, New York is a queer hole, composed of good and bad characters, sinners and saints, French men and English, Germans and Irish, and also a few Scotch. Tom, Dick and Harry mix all together and scramble along the best way they can. You mustn't forget to write on return and give me all the news of Coleraine and the surrounding neighbourhood and give my compliments to your family, the young ladies especially. I am, dear Robert, your sincere friend, William Young. The Mellon Centre for Migration Studies consists of three main elements. The library, a teaching and research programme and the Irish Emigration Database. I have had such a great day here at the Ulster American Folk Park. Who would have thought there was so much to learn? You really should come yourselves. You never know what clues you'll find to your own Ulster Scots ancestry. <laughs>